الحمد لله الحمد لله المنعم على أهل محبته بالإحسان نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له هاديا مرشدا وأصلي وأسلم وأبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا وإمامنا وأسوتنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأهل بيته والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وإن خير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear brothers and sisters in Islam I will start this khutbah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said بعد أعود بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Say to them, you cannot compare those that they have knowledge with those that they don't have knowledge. And definitely, in our lifetime, if someone does not know how to use a computer, it will be something very surprising. Or if someone does not know how to use now an iPhone or a smartphone, people probably may start making fun of that person. You don't know how to do use that yet? And among the young people and also the adults, older people, if someone knows how to use all the applications, so it's something very interesting. He may be very proud of himself that he knows how to do that. And he may show the other people, look how much I know from this. And definitely if someone does not know how to drive a car or does not know how to swim, we might tell that person, you are in a big danger. <laughs> you don't know how to do this. And definitely he will rush to someone to teach him. And definitely if you ask him whatever money, he will pay him. It looks like these are the ABCs in our lifetime. That you have to know those things. To survive, to live, to be probably a human being. If I don't want to go that much. But if anyone does not know how to read the Qur'an properly, or he does not memorize, but only very little, little bit of the Qur'an, or he does not even know how to read the dua for himself or his father or his mother or somebody else, or probably he does not know how Salatul Janazah is being performed. And if we ask him, please brother, come and lead this prayer, especially it's a Salat Jahriya that he has to recite out loud in Maghrib or Isha or Fajr. I will be very, no, no, I don't want to do that. But he will not feel uncomfortable that he is missing a lot of things. And he does not think that there's so much that he is missing. Alhamdulillah. Definitely all of us who are Muslims in this place. Definitely. And that's why we are over here. And all of us, we have the same duties, the same wajibat and fara'id. And all the people are equal in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the Islam, there is no priesthood. It's not only the priest who's supposed to know this. It's not only the rabbis who's supposed to know this. Every single Muslim will not be excused to know the ABCs of his deen. And he will be accountable for it in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Man or woman, they will not be excused if they don't know how to perform their salat or they don't know how to perform their wudu. Once you reach the age of puberty, of bulugh, then you are responsible in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's no other, no excuse to say I don't know. Probably in the beginning, but after 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, say still I don't know. I'm reminding you what I said in the beginning 
about the computer and the iPhone and the smartphone and all that, and I'm bringing you back again. That these are the ABCs of your dean. And how you say, I don't know. I didn't get the chance to know. You are not interested properly. One more question. Do you remember when was the last time that you memorized a new ayah? Or a new surah? You may say probably 20 years ago, 40 years ago. Yeah, when I was a child. And during all this time, you didn't have time. You are too busy. Me and you. All of us. Or if I say, do you remember the last time that you read a book about the Islam? About Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you remember last time that you said, you know what? I want to correct my ibadahs. I want to improve my salat. I, I want to improve my wudu. I want to improve my, my fasting. Subhanallah. If we ask you, mostly if we ask someone, so yeah, your brother, no, those are probably the imams supposed to know about them. Imam and you are equal in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have the same thing. And you will be judged, you and the imam or anyone else, in the same way. All of us, we know that if you don't perform wudu in the proper way, the salat is invalid. It's not only the wudu. Now, definitely, if you don't know how to make a ghusl, the wudu is not going to be acceptable and definitely the salat will not. And if we ask a couple of brothers, brother, do you know how to make the ghusl? Uh, yes. Uh, then you say, oh, I'm not sure. Well, I've been doing it in this way. When did you learn? Well, um, I don't know, but I learned. So you carry that from a person to another person. And this is the base of your deen. And your salat will not be accepted unless this is also valid. But you never pay attention that I do have to make sure that this is I'm doing it on the proper way. I have to make sure that I am doing my ghusl in the proper way and my wudu in the proper way and my salat in the proper way. When you get into any business, you say, I want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. If you want to do anything, say, I want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. If I'm going to the doctor, I want to make sure that I'm going to the right doctor. If I'm going to the dentist, I want to make sure that this dentist, this and that. You don't want to make sure about your deen. These are more of dunya. And these are acceptable, of course. Permissible, actually. Halal, open for everyone to do this, to do that, to learn this, to learn that. But the base of your existence over here in this life and in the hereafter is this deen to learn about it. The basic, the ABCs, like we said. And if you think you're not interested, you don't have time. It's not important. I wonder what excuse you're going to give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Me and you and all of us. Definitely sometimes we spend a lot of time in permissible things. Joking and talking. And these are say permissible things. There's no harm with it. No problem with it. But how much time also we say, you know what? I need time to learn about my deen. I need time. To improve myself, to learn about my deen. Subhanallah. <clears throat> Let me go back again. Because a lot of brothers say, you know what? Rather, you are trying to make it difficult. You are trying to make it hard. It's not difficult, it's not hard. I say, this is the ABC of the deen. And each one of us has to learn those ABCs. How to do this and to do that. In Arabic we say, مَا لَا يُعْذَارُ الْإِنسَانُ بِجَهْلِ Something that you don't have any other not to know it. It's those real basic things. And don't say, oh, I don't know, it's okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive me because I don't know. That's only for some person who is a young man, probably he's just on the age of whatever puberty, or someone who just accepted Islam, we give him a time to learn. But you are living your life as a Muslim, alhamdulillah, for years and years and years, and you had the chance to do everything, the halal and the haram. But you did not have the time to learn the ABCs, and I'm repeating over and over, about your deed. My dear brothers, definitely me and you will be in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you will ask us, 
about every single salat and every single wudu and every single psalm and every single hajj and every single zakat. And I wonder what's going to be your answer. You know, I had doubts. At that day, there is no room to say I had, I had doubts. At that day, you cannot say, let me go back and learn. It is right now, subhanallah. One basic thing is also, it's just point that I'm sharing with you. In most of the cases, some of us attend some kind of classes or some kind of lectures. But you may realize that most of those lectures is only for mawaidah, given an advice, but not for ilm. There's a difference between someone who is telling you, you got to be good, akhlaq is this, and, and these are beautiful things. This is the base of the deen also. Akhlaq and, 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 and uh, uh, manners, characters, uh, loving each other. These are beautiful things. And we talk a lot about this. But the other part, which is again, the base of the deen, you enter Islam by saying shahada and performing those five pillars. If you don't know how to practice them, what are you going to say? And a lot of say, brother, don't worry, I have a good heart. Subhanallah. That good heart is the one supposed to lead you to learn about your deen and to have the excitement to learn about your deen. Let me move on a little bit. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran said, Indeed I created the human engines for a reason, and he said, يَعْبُدُون To make ibadah, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another thing, say, لِيَعْبُدُون لِيَتَعَلَّمُون To learn. And actually there's no ibadah will be accepted without knowledge. Definitely. If I don't know how to worship Allah, how am I going to worship Him? If I don't know how to make wudu, how am I going to make wudu? Don't say my niya is okay. And it's okay. Everything has a base. And that's why Rasulullah saw a person praying. And after he finished, he called him. And he said to him, Salli. Go and pray. You did not pray. The person repeated his prayer three times. Rasulullah, each time he was telling him, Salli. Salli. Go and pray. Indeed, you did not pray. The man didn't say to Rasulullah, Brother Rasulullah, it's my intention. I had the intention to do the prayer, so he's accepted. No, it does not work in that way. You got to do it in the proper way. And that gentleman, he was so beautiful. And he said to Rasulullah, وسلم, this is all what I know. Teach me. Alimni. So Rasulullah started teaching him. You do this and you do that and you do that. Two people will never learn. Someone who is arrogant. Because he will always think, you know what? <laughs> I, am, I am bigger than knowledge. He may not know anything, but he doesn't want to. Arrogance will take you out. Second one, someone who is shy. Or let's say, he has always, he is shy to learn. Because he's shy to have people who will say, oh, you don't know. Oh, you just don't know now. Because you know what? Sometimes you are in the age, probably very old like me. And you say, you know what? I cannot learn right now what the people will say to me. Oh, for all these years, you just you did not learn how to do this? Why, well, it's, it's okay in that way to learn. Then to die and you did not know anything. It is okay to stop and make and correct yourself. Then to live on you know, some mistakes and you never stop for a second and to correct yourself. Especially about the base of your deen, ABCs of your deen. I'm not talking about philosophy. I'm not talking about something very difficult. I'm talking about the base of our deen. And many times you see the people, they come into the masjid or in the area where the orient places and you realize, I don't know what these guys are doing. And that person, mashallah, he's a nice person. He comes to the masjid very often. But he does not know. Who have an excuse? All of us who know that story of that man who killed 99 people. Very famous story, all of us, we know it. Then he asked, is there any tawbah? Is there any repentance? Will Allah accept my repentance? It says in the hadith, So the people told him, you know what? There is a very pious person. Go to him. He's a good worshiper. Abid. Abad He worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he went to him. Ask him. Say, there's no tawbah for you. So he killed him also. 
<laughs> there's no taba. Okay, finish with that person too. And he continued. Again, the excitement, I mean, he wants to repent to Allah. So again, he asked. It says in the hadith, فَذَلُّوهُ عَلَىٰ رَجُلٍ عَالِمٍ So the second time, he told you, know, there's a person who has knowledge. So when he went to him, he said, is there tawbah? He said, who can close the door of tawbah? Doors of tawbah are open all the time. Definitely. He changed that human being. From a person that he has no hope, to a person that he has hope now, to a different kind of person. And he said to him, and look at the advice, leave this place. Because all the people of this place are not going to help you. They are not good people. Go to a certain place where they are good people. Join them. And definitely probably Allah will accept your repentance. He went there. He died in his way. Anyway, the story, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him. You see how ilm will lead you to a life. And how jahl will lead you also to death. And both of the people, they are Muslims or mu'mins. And this one, he is a good worshiper, abid. He comes to the masjid, but he does not have the knowledge. And sometimes it happens to us when we don't have the basic knowledge of very basic things that we need. Subhanallah. This was just an introduction to tell you knowledge is so important. And I'm not talking about the other ulum. Of course, being a doctor is a beautiful, being an engineer is a beautiful. Being anything, it's so beautiful. And it does help you. And we need doctors and engineers and all that, definitely. But all of us, with no exception, we need to learn about our deen. Al-ilm al-shara'i. The basic of your deen. A doctor cannot say, I'm a doctor, I don't need to learn about those things. Well, you have to. This is umur dunya, it's in your life. But in hereafter, you need to learn about your salat and siyam and wudu and, and all those things. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the ilm in the Quran, you will realize how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises that. Because it opens the door for you to know the, the one who created you, Al Khaliq. And Ma'rifatullah, to know Allah is the number one that you got to know. Who is Allah? The one who created you. You know about his asma, about his attributes about his qudra, about his power. You have to know those basic things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many places praised praise the people of ilm. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in many places spoke about the ilm. And I'm not talking only about scholars because they just go, no, 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 each one of you has to learn about his deen. And the more you learn, the more you're coming closer to Allah. And the more you learn, you may improve your ibadah to come closer to Allah. Look what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. وَفَضْلُ الْعَالِمِ عَلَى الْعَابِدِ كَفَضْلِ الْقَمَرِ عَلَى سَائِرِ الْكَوَاكِبِ He said, you know what? If you compare a alim with a abid, and both of them are Muslims, both of them are mu'mins. He said, if you compare this one to this one, the fadl of the first one of the alim, it's just like you comparing the moon with the other stars or planets if you want. Not only that, in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, وَفَضْلُ الْعَالِمِ عَلَى الْعَابِدِ And this is really amazing. وَفَضْلُ الْعَالِمِ عَلَى الْعَابِدِ كَفَضْلِي عَلَى أَدْنَاكُمْ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you compare a alim to the others who are not, it's just like you compare Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to with the lowest person among the mu'mins. Can you see the difference? Why actually this value is given to the ulama or to the people of knowledge? Because they show to the people their Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They show them how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They open the doors for them to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the reason. And the more you learn, the more you come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more you don't know, I wonder how you are going to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, in one, ver in one saying, it was just amazing. He said, Mawtu alfi abid ahwanu min mawti alim. A lot of people may not like it. But he said, you know what? If 
1,000 Abid died, it's less harming than the death of one Alim. So what are you talking about? Because every Abid, he is worshipping for himself, not for the others. When you offer your Salat and your Psalm and your Zakat and all those Ibadat, do you do it for somebody else? You do it only for yourself. But the ilm that you could share with the others is different because the other people will benefit. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is better than anyone else. And that's why the Anbiya and Rasul are better than anybody else because they brought the ilm to the people to teach them and to take them from the darkness to the light. That's the purpose. The ilm that will take you from the darkness to the light. This issue of ilm sometimes is very bitter. It's very difficult to read. It's very difficult to sit and listen. It needs sabr, patience. And that's why one of the scholars said something amazing. Say, we have some kind of ladda, a pleasure in the ilm that the others don't know about it. And if they really know about it, they will fight us with swords. Imagine, you know, everybody's fighting for money and power. Imagine if we're fighting for the ilm also, how it's going to be. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not give ilm to everyone. And that's why the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said, May yuridi Allahu bihi khayran, yufaqihu fi deen. Just look at this one. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, If Allah wants something good for you, He will give you the fiqh, the understanding of your deen. So it's a sign. When you see yourself, you like the deen and you want to know. You want to understand about your deen. And you spend time, you spend money, you spend so many things just to know about your deen. It is a sign that probably Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants some khair for you. He wants something good for you. May Allah get all of us the right path. Astaghfirullah alaykum wa jama'il mu'mini. الحمد لله وحده ولا يدوم إلا ملكه والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه. This is an invitation to everyone. It is never late. At any age, you may be five or you may be eighty-five. It is time for you to learn about your deen and to improve yourself. And that's why you say طلب العلم فريضة على كل مسلم ومسلمة. Seeking knowledge is a فريضة, is a فرض on every single Muslim and Muslim, regardless the age, always. And that's why those ulama, someone will ask them, uh, until when you will keep writing and reading the hadith? He say until قبر من المهدي إلى اللحد, just like it says in Arabic, from the day that you are born until the day you go to the grave. You need to learn, Subhanallah. I will close with the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again. When he said, just giving an example. The hadith is in Sahihain, Bukhari and Muslim, from the hadith of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu anhu. Qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah is going to give you an example. Inna mathala ma ba'athani Allahu bihi min al-huda wal-ilm. He said the example with the, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sent me with, with guidance and knowledge. It's just like the rain came on the ground, on the earth. And this land are different types of lands, just like different types of people, which is we'll see in the hadith. So one of the lands, it took the water, and it does what? It gives the fruit, right? The grass, and all what you can think about it. Vegetables and so on. And there's another type of ground. It does not grow anything, but you know what? It saves water. And people could use that water after. And people will benefit from that water. 
So the people could drink and could use it also. But the third one, it's like a, a rock. It would not absorb the water. It would not save the water. It would not grow anything. And he said, and that's just like someone who has the fiqh of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You ask yourself, what type of land do you want to be? The one that will give fruit, the one that will save the ilm and give it to the others, or the one that it doesn't matter. The water come and the water leaves. The ilm will come, the ilm leaves, and you are not there. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those that they will be beneficial for themselves and for the others. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we sure, all of us, with no exceptions, that we have this love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left out with a device and he said, Balligu anni walaw ayah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has a request for all, from all, for all of you. Rasulullah is requesting all of us. Balligu anni walaw ayah. He said, convey from me even one ayah or one hadith or one information or anything, one. But if you lie on my behalf, just pick your place in Jahannam. Now, anyone who claims that he loves Rasulullah, and all of us we do, Rasulullah has a request. Learn the deen and convey the message to the others. And we cannot be good representative of this deen unless we learn and we try to teach the others. It is very simple, that it's an invitation. And Ramadan is very close. Are we gonna prepare ourselves to know about Ramadan also? So we can perform Ramadan in the proper way. Probably this Ramadan will be accepted from us. Probably this Ramadan will be a reason for Maghfirah and Rahmah for us. Probably this Ramadan will be a ticket for Jannah for us. We hope, inshallah. لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وإليه المصير وعلى كل شيء قدير ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم اهدنا واهدي بنا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر لموتانا وموت جميع المسلمين two brothers requesting dua one of them his mother passed away and the other one his father passed away اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء من هنا وموات اللهم اغفر لهم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أبدلهم دار خير من دارهم وأهل خير من دارهم وتجاوز عن سيئاتهم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى جميع المسلمين اللهم اشفهم وعافهم واعف عنهم يا أرحم الراحمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين قوموا لصلاتكم يرحمكم الله وأقم الصلاة